So I think what I'll do is I'll late join the Super Blitz Arena. And then once this tournament finishes, I'll do some slower, more instructive rapid chess. So we'll kind of have a mix of different types of chess today. Yeah, so hopefully, hopefully people will come for the Blitz, stay for the Rapid. You signed a board for uh -oh. me recently in St. Louis. I had a guy oh, really? playing that asked you for me. Thank oh, you. Oh, nice. You're and welcome. You know, making a blunder sucks. It happens. Wait, let me, um, where's the game behavior? No, okay. I guess I'm playing Happy with Zen mode. Year, Eric. Hoping for some great gambits today. Oh, should I play a great gambit in this game? Let's start the year with a Belgrade gambit. Knight d5. I don't know who I'm playing, but uh, I already like the position. I really like the position. Oh, knight e5 is interesting. Maybe I'll take and play queen h5. So I'm attacking this, pressuring this pawn as well. If d6, then maybe knight b6, attacking the rook and f7. With queen g5, I mean, maybe I'll take here first and then take and then take. Or mate. Okay, let me guess the elo. Uh, 1400. Oh, 1934. Okay, um, I'm going to turn off Zen mode. I think I'd prefer to know who I'm playing. Display. No, I had it set to in-game only. So now it's off. Um, very quick win. First game of the year for me, winning in 12 moves. Uh, can't get much quicker than that. Thank you, Walright, gifting to Nate the Great 64. Also gifting to A.O. Kohler. Appreciate it. Has gifted 52 subs to the channel. Also, thank you, Samsonite, gifting five, which I missed earlier. And DL Forork for the seven months, who is also requesting Gambits, so maybe take some credit for that last game. New opponent playing Silvanito. Uh, can't quite play a Stafford here. But I'll play... Hopefully some principal chess. Uh, bishop f5 looks pretty natural. I don't know so much theory in this exact line. But just developing pieces, controlling the center. I'll have a choice probably between bishop c5 or bishop e7. Okay, now I have a choice between taking some other moves. Kind of like the idea of this move. Saving the queen, defending the bishop, so maybe preparing to take. Also maybe preparing to queenside castle. A nice active setup. Hope you'll have a great new year. Any hope for a Stafford course in the future? Hmm. I have so much like free content on the Stafford that I don't know if, if a course would be so much in demand. Um, but I'm hoping to release a course sometime this year on a, a different opening. Thank you, MLP, Nix, and War Leopard. Happy 49 months. Did I just blunder? I think I just blundered the pawn. If takes and rook takes. And now I'm, yeah, the bishop's overworked. I'll lose a pawn. It's not that bad. I have the bishop pair. Thank you, J-Tank, or J-Tonk. Happy 33. So I'm undefeated so far in 2024. I'll see how long I can keep it up for. Welcome back, Capo Greco. Okay, rookie one coming. Ooh, now I can win back the pawn. I 
Bishop G3, I'll move back. Okay, here I'll move forward. Yeah, happy new year to everyone. I appreciate those tuning in early. Three months sun anniversary in Rose and Pog. Happy anniversary. It feels close to having something here. I think I'll just play some like preparatory moves. Play this, maybe bishop c7. I did allow knight d4, which is a fork. Opponent not going for it. Now I could take on c2. Then rook d7. Okay, let's start with this. The calculation is bishop g3, take, take, and then take, and then I should win b3. And then rook e7, hopefully, in the very end. Although, there's that move. Okay, let's play this. So I'm losing back a pawn. If I take... I think this is okay. Pawn takes back, it's made in two. Okay. All right. Um, maybe not the cleanest game, but uh, the rooks proved to be powerful in the end. So moving on. Four tournament points. Leader has 19. Thank you, 69,420 flowers. Happy New Year. A first year. time sub. What was the highlight of your 2023? Ooh. There were a lot of highlights. Um, I'll have to think about that. I mean, the Qatar Masters was pretty cool. That was definitely my best chess tournament of the year. But then there was also a tournament I played in in October. It was a poker tournament. And that was my best poker tournament of the year and of my life. Oops, I just blundered a pawn. Yeah, it was a good year. It was, felt like I um, got a lot of travels, a lot of new experiences. So I'm down the pawn here. I have the bishop pair. One extra half open file. Knight's coming back here, probably. Hmm. That move was unexpected. G3. Because if it takes king g2, the knight is trapped. I could play this move. I think I'm winning material now. Because after takes, takes, both knights are attacked. This shouldn't really help. And if takes here, then the knights and queen are both attacked. Yeah, my goal for this year is to raise my rating. <laughs> Hopefully break 2600 again. My rating dipped, uh, what was it, a few days ago during the marathon tournament. Lost about 50 points. Yeah, so here, end up, hey, Eric, up a piece. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Unsaid. Okay, let's win this pawn. Almost mating. Okay. 
A nice aesthetic mate to finish that game. Ever get that feeling of deja, deja vu. vu? I do. Almost every month. Welcome back, Jamano. Although this, like today, feels pretty new. Not too many deja vu experiences yet in 2024. It's berserk. Still undefeated this year. I'll play Reverse London. I think Bishop E4 is actually the better move, but too late now. Okay, so I'm counterattacking this knight. I'm getting kind of a, a wacky position. Hmm. Happy 2024. Happy New Year to Karst. Happy 17 months as well. Yeah, very imbalanced. I mean, material's equal, but pieces are kind of scattered. I'll play e5. If f5, bishop g5, probably. d3 is a move. If knight moves, I have d2. Okay. Pass pawn in the center. b4 is a good move. Am I losing back the pawn? I have this move. Thanks to at GC at 1729 for my sub. Hey. Irene entering month five, courtesy of G Cook. Welcome back, Irene. Okay, king safety first. So the goal is to consolidate. Probably not F6 coming. I've also stopped b5. b pawn is now pinned. It's a scary move. I still have my pawn. I'm down about a minute though. Hmm. Tricky position. It seems like a very delicate position, actually. Let's play this. I need two. I need two. Maybe I can take. Not sure, though. I need two now. Queen c4. Got my double up rooks. <laughs> Thanks for the raid, Vampire Chicken. How's it going? Oh no, I just lost a piece. But I have counterplay maybe. About to blunder a queen. Happy New Year. Go, my rook. Oh no, I has force mate. Don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Take my rook. I gotta focus here. Queen G1 is the only move. Opponent's burning a lot of time though. Okay, I think I'm safe. Okay. 
Whitehead made in two in this position. White to move made in two. I was hoping for rook takes g7 because queen f3 would be checkmate. But uh, yeah, shortly after I played this, I realized white can sacrifice a queen. Queen d8. Oh no, white's queen, but oh no, my king. That would have been tragic. It's a new year miracle, though. I'm still undefeated. Let's go. Berserking kind of paid off. 31st place. Thank you to Angelica Chessborn. Thanks for the raid. Shout out to Angelica. Also, shout out to Jonathan, too. Uh, let me keep up with these shout outs. Okay, hopefully that worked. Everyone should follow Angelica and Jonathan everywhere. Okay, I'll berserk again. If you're just joining, I'm playing the hourly super blitz. Um, I did late join, about 20 minutes late. But maybe there's chances to still finish decently high. I'm gonna go for this move. I don't mind the trade. Interesting. Yeah, the structure is still pretty solid. I'll try and win this pawn. Okay. I think we see the first pawn diamond of 2024. A very aesthetic pawns. We'll use the G file to try and double up. Ooh. If I on passant, I'm getting anything. Yeah, I think I'd rather keep the pawn there. Just play this. It is kind of weird looking. No, this actually takes a lot of work to win. Because where's my breakthrough? Okay, white gave a free pawn. So now I'm up two pawns. Put the king on c6. Okay, we'll trade bishops. Now I'm up three pawns. I haven't actually lost a pawn yet. I can't win connect eight though. This would be stalemate. Oh no, this wouldn't be stalemate. Okay. I'm hallucinating. <laughs> uh, I'm kind of sad I can't win connect eight. How do I finish this off? Check. Check, check, check. Check. Checkmate. Okay. <laughs> there are a lot of ways to stalemate in the final position. It's actually hard to find a move that's not stalemate and not checkmate. I guess this, this would unstalemate. Okay. <laughs> that was a funny game. 15th place, 19 minutes left, 19 tournament points. I'm, what, 17 points out of first? Uh, no berserking. Let's play e4. We'll have a Sicilian with a6. Okay. 
F5 is very typical. Preventing me from playing F5. Not sure what my plan is. If I take Queen E2 first, maybe like takes an E5. Rook B2 is coming, yeah. Hmm. Not the move I want to play. Ooh. I was completely oblivious to that. It was maybe karma for what I did that last game. Okay, let's try and make it spicy at least. And there's this move, e5. Although this, yeah, this is backfiring. Worth taking the bishop. Play e6 as well. Maybe just this move. So unpinning the bishop. Um, I'm down the pawn. I think black had knight d4 at some point there. But now at least I'm kind of stabilizing. Rook e2. Hmm. Unleashing this bishop. I am subjecting myself to discoveries, but... Okay, king can move over. It's still very uncomfortable. Up a little bit of time. If I take, maybe I'll play this. It's still not pleasant. There, there. I'll try this. Have to prioritize activity. Check. Okay, some gift. Still probably worse though. Hmm. Check there. It's not about the quantity of pawns, it's about the quality of pawns. This is a high quality pawn. A very high quality. Hopefully soon to be a high quality queen. It's still tricky, I hear. Okay. Rook and knight attacked. Somehow I survive that. Check. 
Check. Check. Okay, not the cleanest game, but I'll take it. Um, yeah, that was a roller coaster. So top 10. It's going to be hard to catch up to first. I'll still, still try. Uh, no berserking. Unless my opponent berserks. still time left for a good number of games. Was there a free Rook missed in that game? Did we both miss it? Okay, Cambridge Springs time. This is the first Cambridge Springs of 2024. Queen b3. With Queen b3, I'll play g6 and Bishop g7. question is what to do from here. Something like take and b5. The goal is to get in c5, but yeah, that might be difficult. Although bishop f8 and c5 uh, still loses a pawn. So now the goal is to double up the rooks and still try and prepare this move. Okay, now I think it's playable. Trade bishops. Trade rooks. Trade more rooks. I don't want to trade all the rooks, though. Okay, this looks like a simple tactic. Remove the guard and take the rook. Okay. My patience paid off that game. I was just trying to hold my ground. Eventually, I blundered. Ooh, first place lost and is paused. So, still, still a ways to go. But still undefeated this year. Playing t6, no berserking, f4. All right, let's play a fun gambit, and then e5. What do we call this? The Hobbes Gambit? I just saw Magnus Carlsen play this recently, so I figured it's a, a fun-looking opening. Um... But how to do this? Maybe d5? Bishop e6. Down upon. Have some pressure here. Knight g4, maybe d4 and knight e3. It reminds me of um, like a French wing gambit. Like very often, this is the idea in the middle game is to control the square in the opponent's position. Now knight c2 is a threat. Rook c1, maybe knight b4. Same thing in this case. 
Now rook c1 I can take on a2. Hmm. Uh, looking for tactics. This queen here. Idea rook dg8. Does taking and then taking work? It might. Win b3? Yeah, the interesting thing is that after takes takes, the queen doesn't have a safe square to keep the knight defended. We might see queen takes bishop. And then I'll have a queen for three minor pieces. But this looks good. Threatening queen f3. Very interesting material imbalance. This move, preparing this. Hmm. White's kind of holding on. This move threatening queen takes d2. Also, maybe threatening rook takes h2. If rookie two, I can take on h2. A fun game so far. White's managed to keep things defended. Queen e3, king there. Hmm. Happy New Year, Eric also quack. Thank you, Hamster Ham. Welcome back. All right, maybe going for D3. I'm not sure if that's actually a threat. I guess it is. Bishop takes and then rook here. Trying to poke and prod. Audacious Andy. I remember your last year of the last year. Welcome back. Cheering 224 bits. Appreciate it. Okay, solid position. White's really stabilized though. Man, I'm still trying to exert some pressure. Getting off the x-ray vision. Plan is maybe this and this. Take. Go for this immediately. Running this now. King e2, I have queen e3. White's still... Okay, white's about to crumble. Also about to flag. It was a fun game. Okay. A fun gambit against the bird opening. Love you fast, YouTube Eric. Content. Dr. Donkey. Videos of ultra aggressive gambits or silly alternative mm. game modes. Keep it up, quack. My pleasure. Okay, this will probably be the final game of the tournament. If I win, maybe I can take third. Queen e6.
I wonder if Queen E6 was a mouse slip. Okay, trying to be aggressive here. Mm. Yeah, we trade queens, but the attack will keep going. Knight d7, knight b5, king d, and then maybe this move. Ah, oh, Bach defends this way. I'm still trying to be aggressive here. Maybe the knight can re-enter via c4 and d6. Black's actually pretty stuck. f6 is a useful move. Uh, play this move. Might be sacking a pawn. Forty-four seconds. This game might not count for the tournament. Threatening this move. Okay, opponent gives me a bishop. Threatening mate. Okay. Efficient mate. I think that's the final game. Back to tournament. I thought the green screen was about to fall. Man. Um. <laughs> Great games. Looking forward to seeing on YouTube. Thank you, AKD. So that was the first tournament of 2024. Hello to YouTube. Let me know if you want to see more like aggressive tournament style videos this year. I didn't quite win the tournament. Good job to chess or cool chess school who I think paused like towards the end, but still on top. And now I guess I'll take a small break before the next tournament. I'll try and, uh, I'll try and answer some questions from Twitch chat. Question from Completo. How long do streams often tend to last? I'm not such a recurrent viewer. Streams usually average, I'd say, two to three hours. This one will probably be also two to three hours, or about 40 minutes in. I'm drinking uh, some, I actually don't know the exact type of tea, black fennel apple tea. It's nice, a little bit of honey. Question, how to play the bird's defense against the Spanish? Uh, I'm not a specialist, but if we search for bird, I assume you're referring to this variation, the bird variation. Um, it starts with knight d4 against bishop b5, but it's not an opening I've studied so much. Hey, thanks for the raid. Wimma... I don't want to butcher pronouncing this name. Pronouncing this name. Wima Wima na contain. Women. Wima. Oh, W I M Anna Cantane or Cantane. Okay, I should have looked at the capitalization. <laughs> Hope you had a good stream. Thanks for rating. I think I'll probably start in a new tournament. A lot of tournaments are about to begin. As a relative beginner, does it matter if I play much or play on chess.com versus Lee Chess? Oh, both platforms are good. Um, they're slightly different, so I think everyone might have their own preference. 
WeChat, everything is free, so you don't need to pay. Chess.com, you you can pay for premium and get some extra features with uh, like access to video lessons and game review and drills and everything. So I would say it's good to, to be active on both platforms, at least have accounts on both platforms. Hey, it's me, Eric. Says I'm 1100 OTB, but 1800 online. Yeah, this is very typical. Like there's usually a, a decent discrepancy between over the board and online ratings. But if you're looking to improve like over the board skill, it's good to train over the board. And sometimes it's just about like how many hours and how many events you actually like dedicate yourself to. Um, over time, you'll hopefully find some rhythm. But yeah, playing over the board like slow tournaments is much, much different than playing online Blitz Rapid or even Classical. Usually over the board tournaments, you get over an hour on the clock, usually two hours. So it, it requires just uh, a different approach. You have to be used to taking several minutes per move. But it is nice to have a balance between online and over the board. I'm I'm hoping to have a at least a handful of over the board events this year. Yeah, sometimes when I train for chess tournaments, it's helpful to uh to like find a training partner to like play training games with over the board. Get used to taking notation, using a chess clock, try and minimize distractions. Are you satisfied with being with only being an I am forever? If that were to be the case, yeah, I'm pretty satisfied. These days, my, my chess goals center more around enjoying myself, uh, using chess as a vehicle for travel and um, just a matter of maintaining the passion. So, so far, it's been working out. But I also would like to improve. Like sometimes when I play a tournament, especially the most recent one in Qatar, it was super motivating to like prepare for every game and learn new openings and just develop a a different arsenal of weapons. Okay, I'm going to hop in the hourly rapid. This time I'm only late joining four minutes late. Here we go. Yeah, I don't consider myself a professional chess player. I'm maybe in the same boat as Akaru. Maybe a slightly different boat. I guess I could consider myself a chess professional. But I just wear a lot of different hats. Between streaming, content, playing, etc. Playing Magnata 2016. Good luck to my opponent. Uh, what do I want to play? I'll play Sicilian. Yeah, we have an open Sicilian. I'm going to play the Accelerated Dragon, which is G6 in this position. It's an opening that I think has been Decently trendy at top levels recently, but also very like amateur beginner friendly. Black gets some nice pressure in the center. Bishop e3 was a main move. Knight f3 is probably playable. I'm actually wondering if I can play this immediately. If e5, knight g5. And then yeah, the pawn is kind of overextended there. Okay, now I will castle. And I'm trying to figure out what to do here. Not used to the knight being on f3. Like usually it um it stays on d4, goes here, trades itself. So I mean, sometimes in these positions, black wants to go for d5, but I think that's kind of hard to achieve. So I'm just going to play d6. Look to complete development, probably put the bishop on g4, maybe prepare knight e5. White being preventive. I'll play a6, preparing b5. White being very preventive. Okay, I'll play bishop d7, preparing rook c8. I don't think white's going to prevent this move. I 
There's a question, how far in rating could one reasonably get on following principles alone? I guess we have to define what it means to follow principles. Because there's a lot of principles in chess, but then there's also a lot of exceptions to basic principles. There was a video I was watching recently. It was of um, it was by this YouTuber Sebastian Leg, Sebastian Log. He's a coding YouTuber, but he ran a a tournament for chess bots, where there was some stipulation that you couldn't have more than I think they called it like a thousand tokens. Like it had to be. Uh, somewhat restricted in the amount of code you could you could use. So it's super interesting to see how people program their bots and basically had to feed the bots basic principles and they couldn't rely on like what Stockfish uses to uh um to be like 3500 ELO. E5 ambitious move I'm going to take and then I'll probably end up taking on B3. If white takes here, I take the rook. I should win material in that line. And otherwise, I'm holding on to the bishop pair. Also, white structure is a bit damaged. So... I like this move, offering the queen trade. If queen takes queen, then both rooks are on the open vials. That yeah, was a pretty long video, uh, like over an hour, but I've been watching like bits, bits and pieces of it over the last couple of days. Oh, Fast Eric entered the tournament. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, there were like hundreds of bots in the tournament. Play queen b6. So very simply attacking b3 and preparing rook d8. And I mean, white hasn't made like any obvious blunders, but I think there's a lot of positional deficiencies with the, the queen side structure. And I, I don't see white defending everything over the next few moves. A rook a3 might be the best try here. But rook d8 will come with tempo. Calculating rook a3, rook d8, queen c2, and then knight d5. Just exerting pressure everywhere. Mm. So white counterattacking. Now I can take... I think this is a pretty clean pawn. Okay, I think white just blundered the, the knight. Maybe missed the backwards knight move. Welcome back to Zvush. Happy New Year. Ooh, okay. So white's fighting on. But uh, I'm up a bishop here. Everything's defended. Rook defends a rook, defends a knight, defends a bishop, defends a pawn, defends this pawn. Okay. Uh, analysis. So. Not sure what to make or what to say about this game. I mean, e5 maybe was uh, the first like big mistake. Engine says bishop a2. Yeah, this bishop is definitely a lot more valuable than the knight. So bishop a2 would maintain it along the, the diagonal. Um, maybe I'd still have plans of knight c4. But anyway, moving on to the next game. Playing Baba Kappa. I'll play e4. 
And what opening do I want to play? Bishop c4. I guess it depends if black plays this or this. This is a tournament. This is the hourly rapid arena. It's actually a almost two hour long tournament. Sometimes these tournaments feel like very abbreviated speedruns. If you compare it to the my speedrun series where I'm like slowly going through games, this one, and pretty quickly I'll hopefully start playing high rated players. H6 is kind of a typical move that you see maybe around this rating level. Black was maybe scared of knight g5, but h6 is kind of slow. It gives white time to make progress in the center. I mean, if I play this, there is bishop b4. Considering taking and then playing this, which looks nice. Yeah, there's a line in the scotch where the bishop's still back and this pawn is still back. But with inclusion of this and this, I think white should be a lot better now. With queen e7, I'll castle. Actually, with queen e7, I have to think. Because if I castle, queen takes rook e1, knight e4. F3, queen c5. King h1, and then if I lose the bishop, I fork... The queen and king with my rook. D5 there. And I just move the bishop back. Yeah, I think that works out. Hopefully I'm not missing anything. It's I don't think my opponent's gonna take on e5. Okay, so we have knight h7. Now I think it's just a matter of developing. I don't need to defend the pawn because, yeah, rook e1 will win the queen. And honestly, if I were black, I don't know what I would do. It's hard to find productive moves. Welcome to 04, dude. Yeah, um... It's been, has it been a year since I streamed? I haven't streamed since last year. But it's only been a day since I last streamed. <laughs> I'll play queen e2 here. Actually, let's think about this. Bishop a6's idea. Maybe queen d3. And then something like bishop f4, rook d1. Yeah, maybe the best approach is something like g6, bishop g7. And then then there'll be a question, can I like somehow generate threats? It is hard to attack black when all the pieces are very close to their starting positions. One idea I see is like b3, a4, bishop, a3. Control this diagonal. Maybe I can also like go for f4, f5. That goes for g6. I can also just carry through with, uh, I think I'll just keep it simple bishop g5 and rook d1 like even if bishop g7 is played it doesn't really interfere with my my plan for the domination of the board um yeah starting with rook d1 again no need to defend the pawn because if takes 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 there's gonna be rook e1 and this is one of the, I guess, main ideas is now I can take on g6, I think. Because a uh, pawn is pinned. And if d5, I can probably take on Passant. 
reestablishing the pin. So d3 turned out to be a, a nice square for the queen. Like not only discouraging this move, but also getting some Happy New Year, free pawn on the king side. May we all have a vision now and then of a world where every neighbor is a friend. Oh yes. I appreciate those words. Free to try. Welcome back. Okay, if, if one of these moves I can take, we can trade queens. I'm now threatening bishop d3. Which then, yeah, then the knight doesn't have a great square. Why is a stream labeled friendly, family friendly? This is absolutely graphic. Yeah, it's a little bit graphic. But it's about to get much worse. So if there's any young children watching, you can close your eyes. Or you can keep them open and learn how to hopefully play better chess. Bishop a6. Okay. I don't really want to take the bishop, but... I'm up a pawn. We'll trade... Lift the rook, maybe rook h3 coming, maybe rook fd1. The game will progress. Oh, b3. Preventing rook takes b2. Ooh. Kind of forgot about that move. So now if I play this, actually everything's still under control. Now I have the battery against h6. Rook fd1 probably coming. Yeah, it might be hard to like win this tournament, especially if I don't berserk. Because this is the second game. I'm not even in top 20 yet. I'm back. Welcome back, Google en passant. How's it going? Yeah, we might see some en passant coming up. If d5 or f5. But if not, then yeah, I just want to take on h6. But now, yeah, this attacks and defends. If I play this move, this also attacks and defends. Let's play this move. d7 is hanging. 2024, Eric. Happy 2024. A lot of dudes in the chat. Thank you, dude. 2519. Thank you, I Jackson. First time prime. There's also a lot of people just asking between like chess.com and Lee Chess. I'm playing on leechess.org, but I play on both sites. Tomorrow I'll play on chess.com for Title Tuesday. Just.com actually like announced some different plans this year for Title Tuesday. I think they're calling it Title Cup. There's some like series, like the tournament series is contributing to some like larger prize that I probably won't be close to getting. But I'll try and play at least one of the Title Tuesdays tomorrow. More likely just a late one, but if I wake up and feel fresh in the morning, then can try the early one as well. Box attacking this pawn. Do I care? Oh, let's just take this pawn. The takes and I take on c6. Currently up three pawns. Also, thank you, Soul Soul D Hunter Art. Okay, this knight wants to hurt me. Let's get rid of it. I'll kick the rook.
Yeah, this just takes some patience. If the rook moves back, then maybe like queen e4 could help simplify. If the rook moves to g4, then I play h3. And then white's controlling all the squares on the fourth rank. So actually, the rook has to move back to b8 to save itself. And now, yeah, now let's just go for the simplification. f5, I still en passant. I've never won money in Title Tuesday. Although maybe at some point I won like the streamer prize. Like they had advertised the streamer prize for a while, but I don't know. I don't know if I ever won it. I'm pretty sure they got rid of it too. Because the prize was just called best stream and I think it was just very subjective. It'd be cool if they had like a prize for ions. But I don't think that's going to be the case. Okay, so I'm still up three pawns. I have one pass pawn in the C pawn. Ideally, I would like to checkmate before my opponent runs out of time. Try and be efficient. So the goal in, in these sort of positions is to get both rooks to the seventh. The C7 is off limits, so I might go for this and then this and then this. Maybe I can maneuver the knight some somehow, like... G4, knight, G3. Opponent stops me. Okay, I'll play rook, D5, attacking a pawn. So if rook here, I think I can take on G5. Oh, but then there's bishop d4 check. Okay, let's defend. Yeah, it looks like I'll be winning on time. Unless I can orchestrate some crazy mate in the next like move. Uh, let's pawn storm. Okay. Um, yeah, pretty straightforward game. I mean, got the early opening advantage. I think the main mistake for my opponent was this move h6 in the opening. Uh, generally, if you play the king's pawn as black, you should either play knight of six or bishop c5 in this position. h6 is maybe a sign that they were scared of knight g5. So, like, if bishop c5 here, then knight g5 is not playable. And the difference is now we have knight g5 black and castle, and it's never good for white to take on f7 so early. So hopefully it's some lesson to take away. Feels like I've had, had these openings a lot in the speedrun series, so there's been a lot of games where we kind of go into similar lines. Okay, next game. Playing Get Rog Time. Uh, I'll mix up the opening. I'll play D4 this game. Ooh, opponent wants to play Karo Khan. Or a Slav. I'm going to play C4. There's an idea in the Slav that I'll try is knight d2. I played this in Beal in uh, turned in Switzerland over the summer. And there's a very specific reason for knight d2, which if we don't get in this game, I can show after the game. I think up 70. Subbing for five months. Queen b6. 
Okay, let's play this. Yeah, I think this is already like a pretty rare position. We've we both strayed away from main lines. Bishop f5. Okay, I'm gonna play knight. Knight h4. Now I should say that like usually in these sort of slot positions, knight goes to c3. But one of the reasons for knight d2, we might see it coming soon, is with the knight on c3, it obstructs the queen from accessing h3. But with knight on d2, I can freely move to h3. So if a move like knight f6 is played, I can play this move threatening to take, and then there's a pin against the h file with force black to take with f pawn. But then not only that, I'll also be threatening mate on c8. So there's some really cool board geometry that black has to be very, very careful of. I should also mention if we trade queens, I'm happy to open the a-file for the rook. I hope my opponent's not watching. I just revealed most of my plans. I guess I didn't really reveal what black should do in this position, so... Should still be okay. Yeah, this idea with knight d2, queen b3, queen h3, I think I, I first learned from Amon Hamilton. Uh, we did some collaboration long time ago where we were just sharing cool opening ideas. Let's go for this. This might not actually be the best move, but um, I can't resist. Not every day that you get to play such a move to do so many cool things. Yeah, juicy move. I like that emote. Oh, it comes from Art Vega. Have to subscribe to him to get that emote. Question, do you know any good women chess teachers on YouTube or Twitch? Uh, pretty recently, I've seen a lot of like instructional content from Grandmaster Irina Crush on YouTube. Like she has a pretty small channel, but like very high quality content. Probably very underrated too. She used to teach at a lot of like chess camps I I participated in when I was younger. Yeah, I'm trying to remember like I was probably maybe between the ages of like 10 to 13. And back then, like, she was super, super, like, knowledgeable, like, just a very good coach. But still today, too, like, puts out some good content. Like, beginner-friendly, but also targeting more intermediate players. Okay, so I've basically achieved my goals here. I think I'll take with bishop, actually. Actually, let's think. Chess is played with a mind and not with a mouse. So if I take with knight, I get tempo on the queen. Queen moves back. Nine develop. Queen could also move forward, but nine block with some attack. Take with bishop, pierce through the diagonal. I'm going to take with knight. The main point being, I want my bishop on d3 to then set up the threat of bishop takes g6. Yeah, I'm happy to get the tempo on the queen. Queen is almost trapped here. It's queen b5, there's knight d6. The discovered fork. Actually, the queen is is going to be trapped. I didn't realize that. The queen a4 is the only other safe-looking move. But that walks into b3. And knight does a really good job controlling b3. And then if here or here, again, knight e6. And I'll get um, a yeah, queen for two minor pieces. Okay. 
Nice game. Let's uh let's quickly take a look, but I, I said that after the game I would show the idea, but the, the idea worked out during the game, Queen H three. Um so feels good to get that. Moving on to the next game, playing Frank Pick. And what do I want to do? I'll play e5. And instead of going for a Stafford, let's just play knight c6. Let's play like a mainline e4, e5, bishop c5. Ooh, d4. What do they call this? The Rousseau Gambit? I have to remember the theory here. I'm pretty sure I can just take with bishop. F4 might be coming at some point. <laughs> Walking into a gambit without much opening knowledge. Opponent wants to checkmate me. I have queen f6 or knight f6. I don't think I mind knight f6. Because bishop g5, h6. It'll be a situation where like double pawns won't be too hurtful. And in this line, yeah, I probably can just castle. Maybe, actually maybe d6 first. Bishop g4. Bishop g4, queen g3. I'll just castle. Up upon following principles. I think there is a, a slightly better way for white to play the opening. Like maybe had to play f4 sooner. f4 is still an idea though. Although, yeah, now it could run into knight h5. So, what to do? I should take the bishop, could start to maneuver. I think I'll maneuver. There's a lot of Italian positions where black likes to go for knight e7 to g6. This seems like one of them. Hey, it's Lafong. Happy New Year, Lafong. Hope you had a good stream. Also, hope you're doing well. Welcome in, welcome in all the Lafong Raiders. If you're just joining, we're doing some more instructive rapid chess, playing the hourly rapid arena. Opponent offering the knight trade, but allowing knight takes e4, which attacks the queen, attacks the knight, wins another pawn. Did NGX win a piece? Not sure what that means, actually. I think knight takes pawn wins the piece. I don't see a way for white to not lose a knight or a queen here. Oh, question about knight h5. Yeah, knight h5 also probably worked, hitting the queen and knight. I think this just wins a pawn on top of everything. Who is LaFong? LaFong is um is a very prolific chess streamer with two amazing cats. Has some very high energy content. Okay. Oh no, my opponent's queen. I did see LaFong in, in 2023. We, we did a very small co-stream in person. It was shortly after my uh, my poker tournament. I'll have to return in uh, in this year. Play this move and then this move. Oh, let's attack the rook. White can play rook h3 to skewer my queen and pawn. 
I, I was hoping for Queenie one checkmates. Not quite happening though. Thank you, Fine Brian, the tier one. Okay, now if I play this, this is actually kind of working. So I think I just want to simplify offering the bishop trade. If bishop b3, I can play d5. Okay, white wanting to win back the queen. I mean, I might just take and then take and be up a rook in three pawns. Hey, thank you, fine Brian. Gifting five. Really appreciate that. That's super kind. Okay. The pawns will keep marching. Sometimes opposite color bishops have a drawish tendency, but at this position, I have a lot of material to work with. Rook g2 checkmate. Okay. That was pleasant. Um, analysis board. If we go through real quick, this has been played in master level, but white should take, take, and then bishop e3 and probably f4 soon. Knight c6. Oh, then knight c3. Okay, next game. Playing Coma 1990. Um, let's play in English. Mix up the opening even more. It was my first English of 2024. I started playing the English when I was rated around like 2000. US rating, maybe 2100 FIDE. And this is kind of my pet line. I went through a a several year phase of playing still occasionally go for like in serious games one of the ideas of a3 is to uh get a reverse taimanov and this is like reverse open sicilian taimanov basically is the setup but i'll be up a tempo There's a question, can you play Alien Gambit? I don't know what that is. Is that named after Witty Alien? Yeah, there's some opening names which I still have to learn what they mean. Yeah, let's play B4. Maybe going for B5. Oh, Fine Brian says I play the sign. I didn't know that. Maybe the, the gifted subs cause some uh what's the term telepathy some summoning of the english so i could go for b5 b5 is actually it's looking nice because i'm attacking the knight if takes takes and i'm pinning the knight and threatening to win the pawn oh yeah esb Subliminal opening request. And black can defend here with like f6 or bishop f6 or bishop d6. But then d4 could be an idea or 94. It's a nice position, a lot of pressure against the center. What do I think of the Polish defense? I think that refers to b5. Not an opening I would recommend, unless maybe you're from Poland and you want to be patriotic. Or if you're Magnus Carlsen and you're playing against Judah and you want to meme. But um, yeah, there's there's probably better openings. So black is gambiting. Okay, let's take and take. 
and probably d4. Could also move back. A d4. Might as well reinforce the knight. Okay, so I do have a few options. Like knight f3 is a, probably the most natural move. So knight c4 attacks the queen. But knight c4 also leaves the knight as a target. And knight d3 is the other option as well. I think just knight f3. Black is maybe going to play this, but there should be ways to deal with that. I might just allow the, the trade. Also, maybe there's some chance of fighting for, for first. Over an hour left of 12 tournament points. We do see bishop g4. If e4, take, take. Still kind of inclined to go for h3. Like provoke black to uh, double my pawns. But now the king might just stay in the center. Maybe I'll use the g-file for the rook. I have not heard of the Ukrainian variation against uh, Sicilian. Yeah, there has to be like hundreds, if not thousands, of like different opening names. There's a lot of obscure ones that I have not uh, committed to memory. Okay, f5. I really want to play this and then bishop a3. Yeah, let's do it. Allowing knight b4. But knight b4, queen b3. Mm. Should be fine. Calculation is knight b4, queen b3, king h8, bishop a3. Knight d3, king e2, and then the knight and queen will be attacked. Also, this is a pass pawn, so maybe makes sense to push. Question about the fide rating. Oh, the fide rating changes. I don't know anything about it. It doesn't really affect me, but it, I think it affects people rated below 2,000. I think it takes effect this month. Okay, so knight is kind of pinned. I mean, this does look scary, but hopefully I'm not missing anything. C5. Yeah, C5 does maybe... Aim to undouble the pawns. But after takes, takes, knight d5, queen e6, I have rook b1. I think everything is okay. Thank you, NB. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Appreciate it. Yeah, this is definitely the like toughest game I've played so far this tournament. Even though I'm up a pawn, I feel like Black has like still some compensation. Happy New Year, smile. Happy New Year, Diamond. Happy 23 months, too. Two-year anniversary coming up. 
Oh, is FIDE postponing it till March? Yeah, it's so hard to keep track with all the news in the chess world. Bishop h4, interesting. Hmm. And you want to know the plans with knight here? There were a few plans. One, I am attacking the pawn. Although I probably don't want to take it because I get pinned. The other idea is just to move to f4. Which looks pretty solid. And expecting a rook to come to e8. Rook e8 would threaten queen takes f4. So I'm thinking the king will be happiest on f1. The queen a6 I'm not too worried about. Off the e-file, off the diagonal. Man, if my pawn and this bishop weren't here, knight g6 would be checkmate. Some nice uh, coordination against the black king. It might be hard to generate some mating ideas here. In terms of positional play, I probably want to play rook c1. This is potentially a backward pawn if it can't advance to c5. Ideas like rook c1, rook c5 look pretty nice. Black, of course, plays c5, though. So we might just be trading take and then yeah, probably taking king g2. Just so I can connect the rooks. And light's very useful here in preventing any like rook g6 shenanigans. So this sort of rook lift isn't so effective. Yeah, so far this game has been kind of just a matter of winning a pawn early and then just being patient, trying to make sure things are solid. This move I did not anticipate. I'm wondering if I can play this. But then that allows, I guess it allows rook a6, take, and then rook g6, king here. I think I'd rather keep the knight on f4. Prepare rook d5 and rook cd1. I glance over at chat, someone's suggesting an idea that did not come to mind. Maybe I would go for in like a, a faster time control of this, this, and knight g6. That would be funny. But uh, yeah, taking a different approach, focusing on the center. In these cases where I glance at chat and there's like a, a strong or interesting move that I miss, then then I'll like I'll kind of just choose not to play it. But usually when the game heats up, I'll I'll just stop looking at chat so there will be less conflicts. So opponent taking time here. Um I mean I might just be winning on the clock, but we're going to improve the rooks. Play rook d1. Uh, rook d1, I lose a pawn. Oh, there's almost some cool idea, though. Do I play this move for the... No, this move doesn't even work. I was thinking to set up knight g6, rook h4. But... Maybe I just play a5. So now the queen defends or rook defends the pawn. Thank you, Kaladin. Okay, now it feels like there should be some back rank ideas. At the very least, I start with this. Just preparing this.
Welcome back to Shawarma. Yeah, if you're just joining, um, we're about halfway through the hourly rapid arena. I'm trying to orchestrate some checkmate, but Black's trying to win this pawn. Looks like a take on f5. Now this move. Ninety six looks pretty strong. Threatening rook f eight. Although b3, I should have calculated. Wait a minute. Okay, well, we don't go into that. Yeah, this move. Now I'm threatening this. Check. Having trouble here, maybe this move. Some weird sequences. I think I'm gonna win the pawn though. So now I'm attacking this and this. I'll protect my king. Ooh. Fancy. I don't want the final position to be losing for me. Mm. Let's play this. And then this. Actually, let's play this. Okay. <laughs> uh, not the most efficient way of winning. Did I miss queen takes b4? Like here? I guess this would have traded. Like takes, takes, and then takes. I was really trying to orchestrate some mate, though. Either back rank or using the h-file. Oh, good point. Queen takes b4, queen takes d5. Yeah, that probably doesn't work. Did you miss 1494? 94. Oh, yeah, why didn't I play 94? Probably because I missed it. Yeah, 94 forces this and then take. Unless there's some bishop f5. Wow, this. Yeah, knight e4, there might be bishop f5. Which is, a, I guess, a good move to miss. Because it looks attractive at first. And if, if I consider knight e4, maybe I would like go down the rabbit hole of this line. Um, yeah, because I can't, I can't get away with taking because then knight hangs. Apparently this is already better for black. What about the h4, h5 idea? Oh, yeah. Yeah, maybe I could have gone for this. h4 is the top engine move. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I played rook d1, which I think is a bit more human. 
But it'd be cool to set up this, uh, this checkmating net. Okay, I'm going to take a small break and I'll be back for more BRB. Go back to tournament. Here we go. Ooh. So the person in first place was Berserk winning every game, which is going to be hard to catch up to. So I don't think I plan on Berserking this tournament. I'll ask my opponent Berserks, and we'll see. Okay. I'll probably have a, a, a decent streaming week this week. Title Tuesday is tomorrow. Maybe I'll do Arena Kings on Wednesday or something else. Thank you, Psy Guy, the first time prime. Oh, okay. So I played English opening last game as white. Now I'm playing against English. So I'm playing e5. We'll have maybe some sort of reverse Sicilian. Of course, it depends what white does here. Like g3, knight of 3, and e3 are. Probably the most common moves. D3 also playable. Yeah, I usually go for knight of three. We see D3. White is maybe going for some kind of reverse open Sicilian up a tempo. So I think I'll just stick with bishop c5. Holding off on d5. I was going to say maybe I'll play d5 later, but... Now if I want to play d5, it does take some preparation. So let's just castle. I mean, I've been a little bit more efficient with development. And now I'm wondering, like, knight g4... Are there some justification to this? Because d4, take, take... It's kind of like a fried liver, but white has a pawn on c4... And I'm castled. Let's go for it. I think maybe white should have started with h3 or bishop e2 or bishop g5. Is reverse alipin a thing? Yeah, reverse alipin is a thing. It might have a different name, but... Yeah, there's a lot of lines where black can play c6 against the English. Even at like top grandmaster level. Ooh. I mean, these are the two moves to look at first. D3 almost wins material, but then there's knight d4. Don't think I'm winning anything there. I could go for knight c6. Kind of preparing d3 or knight f2. Yeah, also if I take take d3, knight f or knight d4, white's probably okay. So let's play knight c6. Trying to repair the tactics. Yeah, it seems like white tried to play a Bafinic English, which is usually the setup. But usually in Bafinic English, white doesn't play knight of three. White usually goes for knight e2 and Fiendcat is a bishop. But this is already very different. I've managed to generate some threats early, so white's definitely not getting their normal solid development. How is first place getting so many wins? Yeah, this player has been berserking every game. And for anyone that maybe is not familiar with uh, Lee Chess Arena tournaments, when you berserk, you cut your time in half, so the games are naturally shorter. So takes, takes, d3. And I win back the piece. Yeah, let's go for this. This might just be a big trade. Like if bishop e3, I take, take, take. Or if this. 
Okay, I think I have to take. There is bishop e3 here. Uh, there's a line I'm looking at, knight takes f3, bishop takes c5, queen h4 take, and then here, and then I win back the bishop. The problem is after takes takes here, there's g3. Hmm. Could go for knight e6. I could also sack material. Oh, uh, what to do? Yeah, this is not actually so simple. If I take, I really want to take on F3, but I might be losing the exchange in that line. I'm trying to calculate if it's worth actually sacking material like here, here, 95, take, queen h4. I mean, I might just play 96. Or maybe what if, uh, what if queen f6? Because then I'm threatening this and I have just uh, some discoveries. I'm also pressuring b2. And then there's e5, and then queen b6. And maybe this is the way to go. Let's do this. Keeps the pressure. Rather than re retreating, I'm moving forward. And like, hopefully I'm not missing anything with queen b6. But I again hit b2, and I create the battery. It is kind of a double-edged sword. I'm just realizing there was a move I missed. I was more concerned about b4 there. Maybe it was still okay. Now I have a choice. I could take the knight or take with check. Pulling offering a draw. Let's just take the knight. Opponent resigns. Okay, that was a a slightly strange finish. I wonder if they had to go. Maybe maybe it's dinner time or bedtime. Um or maybe pizza delivery came. Final position. I think black is for choice. Oh black's really for choice. Wow. I took time trying to like figure out the best approach. So engine likes knight takes f3, but why? Ah, d6. But there's a lot of moves, like even queen h4, g3. I, I kind of rejected the line here. I missed queen f6 hitting b2, though. It was the only move. Okay. All right, fair enough. Still a nice game, nice opening. Back to tournament. I'm 16 points out of first. Playing this person. All right, let's play e4. I've been cycling through a lot of the first moves. Played English, played d4. Now we'll play the Sicilian. e5 okay so this is preventing open sicilian it's actually weirdly reminiscent to the previous game but i have another or an extra tempo here play d3 
I'm pretty sure there is a line with knights to g5. Also, knight d2 is an idea. What do I want to do? Maybe bishop g5 is an idea. A4. I actually don't know what white's supposed to do here. I think I'll play a4 first. Prevents any knight a5 shenanigans. Gives the bishop room to move back. And there is like a kind of interesting knight maneuver that white will often go for in these lines, which is knight d2 to f1 to e3. And black is going for bishop e6. Maybe I'll go for bishop g5. So I don't want black to get in bishop e6 and pawn d5. With this move, I'm... I'm probably committing myself to taking the knight eventually. Very often, a lot of other openings, it's not great to make such a trade. But with this structure, because d5 is such a valuable square, I think it's probably justified to get rid of this knight. Knight d2. Yeah, I just want to put as many pieces as possible. I can draw arrows controlling d5. Question, what's your favorite food? When I was younger, I would say Pad Thai. These days, it really depends on like how the food is prepared. I still really like Thai cuisine, like Thai or Vietnamese. But it's hard to pick like a single dish. Favorite ice cream flavor. It's been a long time since I've had ice cream. I like mochi. Like green tea mochi. It's pretty good. It's not something I usually think about, especially during a chess game. <laughs> okay, so knight e3 still maybe on tap. Knight d5. I think I'll go for knight d5. Because then my knights can connect. I think you pump up the Jamie. Happy two months. Yeah, my favorite ice cream flavor is maybe my also my favorite type of tea. A green tea, matcha. As I drink my iced coffee. Is Thai from Taiwan or Thailand? Uh, Thai usually refers to Thailand. I think Taiwanese would refer to food from Taiwan. I did go to Taiwan. Went to uh, Din Tai Fung, known for their soup dumplings. Very good restaurant. Okay, let's go for night two e three. So some trades. If I take with bishop, then we could just trade everything. So I'll take with knight. And now, I mean, we still traded most of the minor pieces. Now it's a situation where it's opposite color bishops, but I'm controlling a lot of light squares in black's territory. H4 looks attractive. I mean, white should definitely have the better bishop here. I think I'll um, just gain space. A5. I 
I guess my opponent wants to play b6. Which I probably don't mind. Play c3. I'm preparing some queen moves. Ooh, b5. Okay, let's en passant. So if rook takes, then this pawn's going to be weak for a long time. If the pawn takes, then I'll have good control over the file. And black can't really fight for the file because I control a8 with the bishop. Like, what I could consider here is queen a4 and then queen a7. But maybe just g3. Maybe I'll slow play. g3, castle... And then decide whether to go for something like f4 or focus on the queen side. Yeah, it's a very classic wooden shield. XQC would be proud. But now what to do? Rook a6. It looks pleasant. Infiltrating a little bit, maybe preparing queen a1. I think the eventual target is going to be f7. Because my bishop can attack f7. Black's bishop can't defend. Even queen a1 right away. And c4. She c4 could be a little bit annoying. No, c4 I take and rook c6. I think. Rook c6 immediately. I'll go for queen a1. I'm making gradual progress. Also... I see the comment. I see the comment from uh, from Ludus. First time watching. Nice to have you here. As I lose my voice, I'm drinking iced coffee. It's decaf, but I don't know something in it is like preventing me from talking. Either like cinnamon or oat milk. It's like some small particles. Do you have a regular streaming schedule? Uh, I don't actually, but I usually stream, like when I'm not traveling, I stream probably three to five times a week. I usually try and stream Title Tuesdays. Thank you, Tyrannical Panda. But yeah, I don't really have a schedule because there's times where I'm just tired and don't feel like streaming and... um. I usually want to stream when I'm most energized. Wow, we do see C4. So, yeah, now it's a question, like, do I go for takes, takes, rook, C6? But then B2 becomes vulnerable. Rook, C6 immediately could run into this move. No, but then I... I can probably take. Let's start with rook c6. As a queen, c4, and d6 are all targets. I guess I should explain that this line, it's a little bit tricky because after takes, 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 I temporarily go up a rook, but then there's rook a1, king d2, rook takes h1. But in the end, I'm winning c4 and also f7. Maybe take on f7 first with check. Did you ever play Scrabble against Naroditsky? I did, actually. This was sometime in 2020. We were both streaming. I don't know if I have the VOD. Danya has like a very big vocabulary, but... Yeah, he he was still kind of a novice in Scrabble. 
Scrabble still requires like a lot of obscure word knowledge. I have to try and find it at some point. Okay, so we are going for the trade of like queens and rooks. I want to take with pawn or take here with rook or bishop. Take with bishop and then take. Yeah, this is felt like a very controlled game. I just kind of got the grip on the d5 square from the opening. And yeah, it seemed like black never really found active play. I know this line is supposed to be fine for black. Bishop e7 is, I think, the best move. But engine says white slightly better. Maybe there's some difference between d6 and bishop e7. Thank you, Gooberfish. Will you ever bring back the Lucini Gambit? Oh, I kind of forgot about it. Maybe. Maybe at some point, when it's least expected. I did have that one video on it. There's one like really cool line where you sack everything and then you win. I'll have to rewatch the video because I I think I forget like most of the analysis. I think I stopped going for it because like there's some line which is just better for white, which was like difficult to play. But yeah, the Lucchini, is, it's a gambit. It's kind of like re reverse Vienna. You play f5 as black in a specific position in Italian. I don't think I ever even got the trap in a game. I just showed the analysis because it was so cool. Was there a mating net with h5, bishop, g6? Oh, you thought there was a mating net. Yeah, there may have been a final position. Um, but the other plan was to push my queenside pawns. Playing Mingo Blunderson. Okay. This might be the first game of today I'm playing against d4. Well, now I'm playing against the Black Mardimer Gambit. Um, what's the line here? Ninety seven. There's a very specific idea that Black can play. If, if White plays f3, then we might see it. Emberg asking, will I play the first annual Crazy House Grand Swiss? Um, maybe? Maybe. I'll have to look into it. Haven't played Crazy House in a while. Oh, Yasser Sarawan is a big Crazy House fan. Anyway, um, speaking of crazy, it's actually a kind of crazy line. I leave the knight attacked, but the bishop is a target on g5. And this is basically the extent of my opening preparation. And all I know is black is supposed to be fine here. I forget the exact engine evaluation. I probably checked it at some point. But there's a lot of lines where black will get the bishop pair in a, a pretty open position. So bishop takes f6. It does look ugly. Double pawns. Although we do both have double pawns. And because I'm the only player left with a dark square bishop... That bodes very well for controlling the dark squares. I'm not sure which diagonal the bishop wants to 
develop to. But I'll have the choice. Probably nine of six. You should do a vid, a YouTube video showing the average day in the life of Eric Rosen. I'll need to hire a camera person to follow me around for a day. I mean, the Twitch viewers do get to see a glimpse of at least part of my day. Okay, knights attacked. Queen e5 is, I think, a pretty reasonable move. Very simply defending. Pressuring e4. Also preparing bishop g4. Yeah, there's maybe some parallels between this and the Cambridge Springs. The queen coming here, pressuring g5, and having the pin. Queen e5 is not a move I would play if knight f3 were possible. But um, yeah, it's hard for white to remove the queen immediately from e5. And casting walks into bishop g4. Pump up the Jamie says you should do a YouTube, or no, I already read that comment. But there is another comment saying you should do a draw my life. From Zvush. Which I think I know what you're talking about. It's like one of these animated videos. A3. That does prevent Bishop B4. Another decision moment. What to do. I think I'll play rook g1, or uh, rook g8, preventing queen g3. I don't want white to even offer a queen trade. And rooks on open vials have smiles, even half open vials. And eventually I do want to play bishop g4 and complete development. So white, white playing very prophylactically with these h-pawn moves, or rook-pawn moves, I should say. And I'm going to play bishop h6, ensuring white can't castle. Also, g3 is now a kind of a hole. Maybe I could have considered rook g3 first. What was your favorite tea in 2023? I'm trying to think which tea I consume the most of. So I cycled through a bunch. Had a lot of Earl Grey. A lot of green tea. Recently, I don't usually drink this one on stream, but there's a nice, like, cinnamon caramel apple tea that's herbal I usually drink before sleeping okay so bishop d3 well now i can consider rook g3 and rook e3 check and white's gonna have ways to cope with that though Ninety two is coming. Just realizing I have this move threatening Queen D two and maybe also Queen takes G two. Also have this move, which is kind of fancy. Like I do feel spoiled for choice. Knight h5 threatening this. I think rook g3. The queen is tied down to defending this pawn. So we're going to see either this, this, or this. Queen e2 hangs a queen immediately. Queen f2, I think, runs into bishop e3. And these pieces are basically squatters. 
like they're making White's home their own home. It's like a a nightmare Airbnb when the the people living in the Airbnb don't move out when they're supposed to. Someone call a lawyer. Okay. Queen F1. Like, I want to win material, but Happy that still New takes Year, work. My cousin is a lawyer. I got you. Winking oh, face. Oh, nice to hear. Good to have connections. I have to call up Yan Gun's cousin lawyer. Or lawyer cousin. I have this move. Queen G5. Yeah, let's play Queen G5. The queen might be the final guest into White's home. My favorite chess game of 2023. I'll have to think about that. Also, thank you, Poco. Appreciate the raid. If you're just joining, I'm trying to win this chess game. It's not so simple, though. Knight of three. Yeah, I don't have time to take. I don't have time to checkmate because the knight controls the square. If I play queen e3, actually queen e3, queen e2, and then I take, this should be good. Yeah, shout out to Poco, a Polish chess streamer. Hope you had a good one. Also, if you're just joining, I've been streaming for almost two and a half hours playing the hourly rapid arena on me chess. And I don't think I'll be winning the tournament. I'm very positive I won't be winning the tournament. Leader has 51 points. I'm in seventh place currently. Maybe I can finish top five. Oh, there's a question. Why not sack the rook? Um, Because then queen takes queen d2, king f1. I should have considered it though. But here, yeah, here I can win the pawn with the rook. We are trading queens. But I'll still have some pressure against the king. The position kind of transforms. Maybe I can still stir up some like, potential mating that. I still want to complete development too. Like Bishop E6 and Castling. Still on the to-do list. Knight D1. Go all the way. It's still a question which diagonal I want to stay on. I'd like to stay on both diagonals, but yeah, the bishop's attacked. Bishop F4 actually makes some sense. Preparing bishop G3. Let's go for this. Rook G1. I can win another pawn here. Yeah, I think I'll win another pawn. 
It does allow White to escape a little bit, but Hello two from pawns Brisbane. is two pawns. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Question, I've learned Stafford, Caro, Can, and London. Any recommendation for my next opening to learn? In Rosen, let's go. Stafford, Carol Khan, and London. Well, those are two black openings against e4 and one white opening. So I definitely recommend learning something against d4. Because yeah, out of those openings, you uh, you still probably should have something when white plays 1d4. Um, but that's a nice mix so far, I guess, uh, I guess it's nice to have like a, a backup to the Stafford Gambit. Like when you don't want to be playing too dubious, you, you can play the Carol Khan. But yeah, I'd probably recommend like Queen's Gambit declined. Or just learning the basics of d4, d5 for black. Having some uh, some solid approach. Sometimes when you're learning, like especially when you're trying to build a repertoire against a move like d4, it's not just about learning one response. It's about like learning a bunch of different types of openings, depending what white plays. Unless you play the England Gambit, <laughs> yeah. But even with the England, there's there's a lot of sub variations. I guess players who who like the Stafford would probably like the England. And there's different ways to play it too. Okay, so we're we're basically in the end game. The goal is to keep pushing the past pawns. Knight's tied down to this pawn. So maybe I'll start with this move. Making a simple threat. I'll make another threat. Now we'll either trade rooks or I guess I don't win the pawn for free. We just trade E for H pawn. Also, I'm just realizing I'm only up one pawn. Why did I think I was up two pawns? I won H3 and G2. Was I down a pawn that whole time? I was down a pawn. I didn't realize that. <laughs> Just realizing now that my material count was off. So I'm only up a pawn. Well, now I'm up two pawns with knight takes e4. I guess I just kind of got confused out of the opening. Lost material count. Oh, he's free moving. Okay. Really hoping to finish the game with mate there, but not enough time for my opponent. Anyway, this was a, a fun line to play, this e5 move and queen a5. Not an idea you see every day. I guess in some sense it was a gambit where, yeah, black essentially sacks a pawn to get um just get a better position wow so knight takes f6 
okay, it's a good move, but the best move is bishop a3, which I didn't even consider. Threatening to take on b2. And queen c1, black can just leave the bishop there and play knight e5. Very engine-like, though. Even if I saw this sequence, I don't think I would go for it. Okay, good game to my opponent. There's maybe something to save for next time, though, like if I encounter that line again. But knight takes f6 is just so much more natural. Okay, this player's paused. What a tournament. Berserk winning 61 points. Next game will probably be the last game for me. Oh, good game to Grouse Mouse. Grouse Mouse? I think is the person who I played. Oh, and that's your pet opening. Okay. Yeah, definitely a, a line to maybe look at, be prepared for next time. So, um, we have a Scandi, Knight of Six Scandi. I've played this opponent once before. There is some theory here. Bishop c8 is a move. Let's defend the pawn. If black plays correctly, they can probably win back the pawn. Yeah, like this move is coming. I'm actually wondering, like, what, what what is the best approach here? D3, knight b6. I can assume that black's next two moves are knight b6 and knight takes d5. So if I get two moves in a row, b3, bishop, b2, maybe. Okay. I have vague memories of Faviano doing this against Perugia Nikovian. It was maybe a different line, but I think it's, it's solid looking. Not something you see every day from this sort of opening. Okay, I can play Queen E2. Just realizing if I play this, Knight B6, I might have to play Bishop D3. I think that's okay, though. Hmm. My g3. Yeah, it's kind of a... A strange development scheme for white. If Black Castle's king side, I'll have a pretty, some pretty nice attacking potential. Black giving me the g7 pawn. I don't know if I want to take it though. The like queen e2 seems a little bit more attractive here. Like, just preparing to castle queenside. Maybe some ideas of knight of five. Ooh. I mean, I want to play this move, but then queen h4. So let's start with queenside castling. I mean, knight h5 is definitely on the horizon. There's a lot of different resources. I mean, there's d4 to hit the bishop, queen e5 to threaten mate, bishop d3 to transfer diagonals.
sometimes positions like this, you want to keep in mind all of your resources and then then decide what works best. I think uh, I think Black just blundered Queen E5, double attack. The knight on d5 would obstruct the queen, but in this case, should be winning the bishop. What's your favorite square on the chessboard? It really depends on the position. At this position, I mean, e5 is a nice square. Now c5 is a nice square. It's constantly changing. Of, I'll keep taking free material. Yeah, going forward, I'd still like to generate some attack. But might as well just optimize the pieces first. D4 looks nice. I'm trying to open up the file and the diagonal. Okay. This move looks a little bit random, but I have an idea with it. Um, maybe never mind. Play this. I have to get the bishop away somehow. Ooh, that's tricky. If takes, 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 I get made it. Okay, let's not get made it. If I take first. I'll just take first and then play this. Yeah, this game might not count for the tournament, unfortunately. Unless my opponent, a king's mate very soon. Bishop's now attacked, c5's attacked. I did want to set up, yeah, this mating idea with knight g6 and rook h4, etc. Let's play this. It's reminiscent of one of the previous games I played. We, we see the same uh, themes of the queen controlling g8, knight having access here, but it's still hard to actually make work out. I think that was a game from the English opening. I don't want to forget about my bishop too. Like there might be still some potential with the diagonal. Mm. Okay, I might as well take a pawn first. Threatening this. Okay, <clears throat> making very gradual progress. Threatening. Actually, I don't know what I'm threatening. Just trying to increase the pressure. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Pammy J, welcome back. 
Happy 23 months. Yeah, trying to attack with all my pieces. Except my king and these pawns. But everything else helping support the, the common goal. Yeah, there's some questions which I don't know if I want to be delving into from chat. Hey, it's Wenzu. I have been playing Italian as both white and black for years now, and so ah. never saw this crazy line that you showed in your last speedrun video. Thanks. Oh, that you're welcome. Awesome. Any chance we could see it again this stream? I'm actually trying to remember which crazy line you're referring to. The most recent speed run. In the Italian. Oh, the um the Greco attack or the molar attack. Yeah. Well the stream, at least this tournament is coming to an end. And once this tournament is over, once this game is over, I'll probably be wrapping things up. But um yeah, I can at least answer questions if you have any questions about the, the opening. Okay. Maybe start with this. Attack the bishop. And now this. A oh, nice fork. Once I win g7, then, then the bishop's going to be a lot more useful from c3. Oh, I see the, the cheer from Groot Pierre. Currently watching with my girlfriend. She would actually love to see you play a game of Scrabble after this tournament. She also somehow wonders if you share her unconditional love for mayonnaise. I don't think I have unconditional love for mayonnaise. Really depends what you can combine it with, though. It goes well on certain things, but not everything. Also, um... Yeah, I feel like this is, this is maybe not the most efficient conversion. Where is my, maybe just G5. Yeah, G5 looks nice. Just want to open the diagonal. Scrabble actually sounds like a decent idea. I will have to like wrap things up shortly after the tournament. Maybe I can play like one speed game of Scrabble and also speed run any questions that Twitch chat might have. I will be releasing another speed run episode, I think in about 10 minutes from now, unless it's already posted. Let me just check. Yeah, a new episode will be released in, uh, I guess, 11 minutes. Now 10 minutes. Yeah, Locke's not resigning. Oh, Locke's not resigning because they rage quit. Okay. <laughs> oh. Oh, no, my opponent. Call draw. Claim victory. Victory has been claimed. Do you play NWL or CSW? I play NWL. It's fewer words to learn, but still a lot. Was Rook H7 guaranteed checkmate? Uh, yeah, that may have been more efficient because Queen C7. Um, engine says mate in five. Rook H7 best move. G5 was made in eight. Okay. Okay. Well, thanks everyone for tuning in. Fun tournament. 
Congratulations to this person, Alejandra Bar. Alejandra Bar? Alejandro BR. Um, 61 tournament points. I finished in fifth. I'm still undefeated this year. I played. How many games did I play this stream? I played nine Blitz games and nine Rapid games. 18 out of 18. Someone called Vladimir Kramnik. But not for me. But maybe for me? Should hire a chess coach. I actually thought about like hiring a coach for whatever my next over the board tournament will be. I'm debating what to do because I I I'm getting hungry, but I think I will do one one game of Scrabble to wrap things up. I like to play on a site called Woogles.io. And I'll just play a game against a bot. This will be a quick game. Um this is basically like the Leechas of Scrabble. And I'm given letters. Feels weird it's transitioning from chess to Scrabble. I could play welcome, but I don't want to use my blank if I'm not bingoing. I know a lot of people watch for chess, but hopefully some people are excited for the Scrabble. We do have the Scrabble command, I think. Links to the website. Um, there's a word here I could play you. There's a, a recently added word to the dictionary. Get rid of my E's. What else can I do? Elect. I need to get rid of some vowels. Maybe just this. Very useful to know the two letter words in Scrabble. Re green. I got more E's, got a U. Turn down the volume a little bit. Okay, so it's 86 to 11. I'm losing. Um, I have the word clue. Uh oh, do I have to change the category? I do. Okay, switching the category from chess to Scrabble. There we go. Thank you, people, for reminding me. I could play Cruel. That's only 12 points, though. Maybe Q? That's 13. I'm going to play Q. Okay. What about like re exile? Re exiles. It's when you exile someone again because they've, they've been exiled, they came back. It's not a word. I almost have elixirs. I still have too many E's. Maybe just this for 30 or for 41. I also have this. Ilex is a nice word. Let's play X, X, U, and G. Okay. Two E's and two I's now. Epa, Epa life, Epa, Epa, Epa file. Epa is kind of a, a common prefix. Pre is also a common prefix. Hmm. Down by 84 points. Could play weep. Could play pie. Maybe pie, pile pie. I'm going to play pie. <laughs> I have three eyes now. What is this? First it was the E's, now it's the I's. Is there a way to use two of them without using the blank? Iris. I 
Hmm. I might just exchange three. I'm going to get rid of all my eyes. Okay. Now I'm down by 146 points. I have Shelly. Shelly for 44. I'm getting crushed this game, though. Hey, it's Ember. Since you talked about getting a coach to help improve your performance, you might be able to convince GM Audited. Jesse from Chess Dojo to help since he has been a cheerleader of yours. Ah. Happy New Year. Jesse. Oh, yeah, Jesse Cry. He's actually the first Grandmaster I drew in a tournament. Um, I wonder if he's he's open to coaching players like me. Thank you, Emberg. So I, I do have a bingo here. I have odd oddity. I also have audited. Maybe here is better. Audited. Put the D here. 71 points. Okay. Oh, I got rooked. <laughs> nice play. Can I play baby? I'm pretty high scoring baby. 45 points. So now I'm only down by 138. So the goal is to triple triple. Hope that the spot stays open. And then... I don't think it's happening though. Oh, Amidos is not even a word. Yeah, this is a rough game. The bot is strong. I got rooked. What does re-greens even mean? After the game, I can check some uh, definitions. Um... I don't know what to do here. Fit. Fa, maybe just fa and fit. Now I want an I for the ING. Mm. Lud. Okay. Something. I see a word here. I have, <laughs> I have virgins. I have nowhere to put virgins. Like the board is kind of exhausted. There's no S hook. I guess I could play it here for fewer points. Maybe better to uh, better to score. Okay, three twenty two to four seventy nine. Re greens is when you have a second helping of spinach. To green again, of course. Rooked. Oh, so rook means to swindle, to take money or property by fraudulent means. I actually didn't know that. A mito containing I might. Okay, well, I have to go. Thanks everyone for watching, sticking around for the Scrabble. Um, I'll be back in the future.